In this video, I'd like to talk about the principle of virtual power. This is an important principle in continuum mechanics. It's also sometimes known as the principle of virtual work. Those are synonyms for each other. Um, and to talk about the principle, we need a few definitions first. So let me first define external virtual power or external virtual work. Again, they're both the same thing. So we want to consider having a body B and look at a subset of that body P. And the external virtual power is defined to be the integral of the surface forces, so the tractions, times a virtual velocity, which we'll call U tilde, plus the body forces dotted with those same virtual velocities integrated over the body. So this is the definition of external virtual power. So it has the real forces applied to the body, the body forces and the tractions, and it has this field which we call the virtual velocity field. And so again, so the T's are the tractions. Those are the tractions here on the surface. So that there's a surface normal there. There's a traction. And then we also have the body forces in the body. So and those can be conventional body forces or you can think of them as d'Alembert body forces. So they can include the inertial term. And again, the U tilde is something that we'll call the virtual velocity field, and it's just some arbitrary vector-valued field over the body. Uh, now we also need to define the internal virtual power, and that's defined to be the gradient of the virtual velocity field double contracted with a tensor field, and I'll just call that tensor field A. So it's just some arbitrary tensor field, function of position. Now, the statement of the principle of virtual power comes to us in two parts. The first part says that the internal virtual power is equal to the external virtual power for all subsets P of the body and for all virtual velocity fields U tilde. So that's the first part of it. And the second part of the principle says that the internal virtual power is equal to zero for all parts of the body whenever the virtual velocity field is rigid. So in other words, whenever the virtual velocity field can be written as a, a fixed vector in R3, so I call that A, plus a skew tensor omega times the position. So omega is a skew tensor. And so the second part just simply says that whenever you have a rigid virtual velocity field, the internal virtual power is equal to zero. And the first part says the internal virtual power is always equal to the external virtual power no matter what virtual velocity field you decide to pick and no matter what part of the body you're looking at. So this is the principle of virtual power. And let's go ahead and try and see what the consequences of this principle are. So, so let me first write down the first part of the principle of virtual power. So I wrote I've written this down in initial notation. So we have the double contraction of A with the gradient of the virtual velocity field integrated over the body plus the traction dotted with the virtual velocities integrated over the surface plus the body forces dotted against the virtual velocities integrated over the body or the part of the body that we're looking at. Okay. Now let me go ahead and manipulate this first term here and I'll take this derivative with respect to j, and I'll rewrite that. So essentially, I'm using the product rule differentiation to rewrite that first term there. And then I'll bring over the body force term, and I'll leave the traction term on the right-hand side. Now what I can do is go ahead and use the divergence theorem on this first term here, and that will give me aij and j and then I'll still have the u tilde i there. And I'll put that together with the traction term from the right-hand side. So I haven't, so those are now integrals over the surface of my part. And then the remaining terms are integrals over the part themselves. So we have the divergence of this A tensor field, and then we have the body force term. And I've kind of moved the minus sign out front to make it a little bit more clear there. And so this is equal to zero. So that's just a rewriting of the statement of the internal 
virtual power being equal to the external virtual power. And let's recall that this expression here, according to the principle of virtual power, needs to hold true for all parts of the body, and it has to hold true for all virtual velocity fields U tilde. So if I do that, then really what I'm going to end up having is something a little bit more succinct, in particular by selecting an arbitrary U tilde and using the localization theorem, I can show or argue that AIJNJ is equal to TI. So in other words, this term in the integrand here needs to be equal to zero. And likewise, this term in the integrand needs to be equal to zero too. So the divergence of A plus the body force also needs to be equal to zero. So those two relationships hopefully look familiar to you. So but let's not say too much more about that just now. Let's go ahead and look at the second part of the principle of virtual power. That says that the double contraction of A with respect to the gradient of the virtual velocity field is equal to zero whenever that virtual velocity field is a rigid field. And so again, the definition for a rigid field was that it was a constant plus a skew tensor omega times position. So if I take the gradient of that virtual velocity field, I'm just going to get omega. So that's why I have omega sitting here. And this has to hold true for all parts of the body P and for all virtual velocity fields. So by localization theorem, so for all parts P, I'm going to get the double contraction of A with omega is equal to zero. And since it has to hold true for all skew omega, that tells me that AIJ is equal to AJI. So that tells me that A is indeed symmetric. So now this is starting to look very familiar. Uh, so what we can see is that the A from the principle of virtual power has all the properties of the Cauchy stress sigma. So I could have just started by writing down the principle using sigma as a symbol instead of A, but it's actually a consequence of the principle of virtual power that the tensor field that appears in the principle is in fact the Cauchy stress tensor. So the other way to look at it is that the principle of virtual power really implies all the classical laws of mechanics, in particular the classical linear and angular momentum balance law and Cauchy's law. So here we have, there's the angular momentum balance law, the linear momentum balance law, and here we have Cauchy's law. So all three of those things are implied by the principle of virtual power. Uh, one way that this is often written down then is we would say that we'd have the external virtual power, and I'm missing a tilde there, is equal to the internal virtual power. And so we often go ahead and replace the symbol A by sigma since we have this connection up here between A and sigma. And the, since sigma is symmetric, I can replace the gradient of U with epsilon tilde, where epsilon tilde is defined to be the symmetric gradient of U. So epsilon tilde would be considered the, the symmetric gradient of the virtual velocity field. So it's a virtual strain rate field over the body. Now, it's also important to recognize that the reverse holds so in other words, if I have classical linear and angular momentum balance and Cauchy's law, then I also, I can prove the principle of virtual power. So the two are if and only ifs. So the classical laws and the principle of virtual power are really if and only ifs to each other. And the proof's relatively straightforward to do. So we start with the classical linear and angular momentum balance laws and Cauchy's law. And so those are those two guys there. And so if we, if we start with the Cauchy's law and the divergence uh, of sigma plus the body force is equal to zero, we can multiply both those relationships by a virtual field U tilde, so dot products rather, and then integrate over the body and then integrate by parts and we'll actually recover the first part of the principle of virtual power. And then to get the second part of the principle of virtual power, we can take the symmetry condition and we can double contract it by an arbitrary skew tensor and then integrate and then we'll recover the expression that appears in the second part of the principle of virtual power. So this is the, the, the concept of virtual power. It can be defined formally or as, as sort of an abstract principle or it can be derived 
from the classical linear and angular momentum balance laws along with Cauchy's law.